Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Teveron here, and welcome to another episode of Friday Night Magic. This week, we are going to be borrowing most of a deck list from Legend VD. This is a deck he ran on his channel a few weeks back, which is Blue Black Drago Control. The list is almost card for card what he was running. I have made a couple of changes, those being cutting one the one Dispel in the deck and the one Jace Vins, Vrins Prodigy in the deck for a land and a Liliana the Last Hope. There were 25 lands in his list, and I prefer in a controlled deck like this to run 26. The reason being is we are running a very high curve, topping out in the 5 and 6 drop range, and increasing from 25 to 26 lands raises our percentage chance of hitting our 6 land drop by turn 8 from 67% to 72%, a uh, full 5%, which is nothing to sneeze at, plus we have other card draw fixing and selection and whatnot in the deck to help even further. The reason I changed from Jace Friend's Prodigy to Liliana the Last Hope is that Lily does a better job of pressuring the opponent, especially in either mirror matches or pseudo mirror matches against other control decks. Whereas Jace Friend's Prodigy is great and helps you card select and then after he flips, flashes back instants and sorceries, uh, Liliana, her ultimate just flat out wins the game and she's a lot less vulnerable to creature removal than Jace. I mean, completely immune to creature removal, so it's harder to get rid of her. Anyway, I digress. Let's look at the deck list, shall we? We start out with two Thing in the Ice. This is an 04 blocker in the early game. Comes into play with four counters. Whenever we play an instant or sorcery, it removes an ice counter. Then, if it has no ice counters left, it flips into Awoken Horror. A 7-8 that, when it transforms, returns all non-horror creatures to their owner's hands. Next is Three Telling Time. I have been very adamant in the past that I am not a fan of Telling Time. I still remain such, but I will be running it in this deck as it helps filter through our cards. It's nowhere near as good as an Anticipate, which lets you put one card into your hand and two on the bottom of your deck, but it does trigger our thing in the ice and help us find what we need in certain situations. Also, three Grasp of Darkness, our early game removal spell, two mana instant, minus four, minus four to a creature till end of turn. Also, two Imprisoned in the Moon. This is our nod to other decks that are running Planeswalkers. Uh, Enchant Creature Land or Planeswalker. Enchanted Permanent is a colorless land with tap, add colorless to your mana pool, and loses all other card types and abilities. So this is our one way to directly deal with Planeswalkers in the deck. Also will allow us to deal with troublesome lands or creatures that we don't have anything available to deal with at the moment. Two, Scatter to the Wind, the first of our hard counter spells. Three mana, counter target spell, and it has Awaken three. Three, Broken Concentration. Our other three mana hard counters, just straight out counter target spell, and we can madness it should we ever be in a position to discard it and counter, which we probably won't in my build because there is no Jace. Still, that was only one madness outlet that we got rid of. Two essence extraction, deal three damage, gain three life, bolsters our health as well as removing threats. Three murders. Straight up three mana, destroy target creature. You don't get much more efficient than that. And here she is, the card we talked about earlier, Liliana the Last Hope. Helps to control the board by shrinking creatures on the opponent's side. Can rebuy our threats should we need to. And her emblem, unless we are in a horrible position or the opponent has some pretty miraculous draws, as we admittedly have seen in the past, will just win the game. One Insidious Will, very versatile counter spell, four mana, choose one, counter a spell, choose new targets for a spell, or copy an instant or sorcery spell, and we can choose new targets for the copy. 
3 Glimmer of Genius as our card draw du jour. Uh, scry 2, draw 2, get 2 energy. We don't really have a use for the energy in this deck, so that is beside the point. 2 Languish. All creatures get minus 4, minus 4 until end of turn. The format is still quite aggressive at times, so Languish is a necessity. 1 Disciple of the Ring for 5 mana. We get a 3-4 who has a myriad of abilities. She can counter target non-creature spells unless their controller pays two. She can pump herself plus one plus one until end of turn. She can also tap and untap creatures by eating instants or sorceries from our graveyard. A single Tamiyo's Journal. For five mana, we have a legendary artifact, which at the beginning of our upkeep gives us a clue. We can also tap it and sacrifice three clues to search our library for a card and put that card into our hand and shuffle. Very useful for finding silver bullets or just for sacking clues and getting a lot of card advantage. The last of our counter spells are a pair of confirmed suspicions for five mana. We counter a spell and investigate three times. Also might notice the synergy between confirmed suspicions and Tamiyo's journal. And now we are getting into the top end of our curve. We are running Jace, Unraveler of Secrets, who draws cards, bounces creatures, and Emblem helps us to lock out the opponent whenever they cast their first spell each turn. That's our turn or their turn. It gets countered. Obnixilus, Reignited, also draws us cards, destroys creatures, and whose Emblem can end the game very quickly. We put that on our opponent. And then whenever anybody draws a card, us or them, they lose two life. And finally, Torrential Gear Hulk, flashing back all of our useful instants while providing a very big body at instant speed himself. Our mana base is very evenly split between black and blue because though blue is almost twice the number of cards as black in the deck, every single one of our black cards requires two black mana to cast. So we're running nine islands, nine swamps, two sunken hollow, two drowned catacomb, and four submerged boneyard. Buckle yourself in and prepare for some long games. Okay, I think this is a perfectly serviceable hand, so we shall keep it. Would love to have a two cost spell, but we're on the play, so that helps a lot. Bowmatch Courier, so this is a very aggressive deck from our opponent. We may have issues with this. We shall see. Alright, well, let's play out a Swamp. We can go island next turn, and then our Sunken Hollow will come into play untapped. Insolent Neonate, okay. Are they mono red, perhaps? That's what it appears to be at present, though not guaranteed. So we would love to draw one of our Languishes. Thing in the ice would also be somewhat helpful in stemming the bleeding. Essence extraction is also pretty okay. What we're going to pass back. Hopefully we can get them trying to put a pump enchantment on something and extract it two for wanting them while gaining three life. All right, that doesn't seem to be happening. I'm going to wait till the last second to do this. Perhaps they can... Nope, not going to invest anything. Well, let's go for this Bomat Courier. And we get it. We will end up gaining one life overall. Going to get Fiery Tempered as well. So the opponent's down to three cards in hand. So in that instance, I guess the Essence Extraction simply countered uh, canceled out the damage from Fiery Temper. Thing in the Ice is fine. 
think we're going to go ahead and deploy that. It can't block a neonate on its own as they do have menace. Alright, so they do have black in the deck. Impetuous Devils, okay. So we're going to be saying bye-bye to Thing in the Ice. The Devils are going to force it to block there, I think, or not. So they didn't do that. Do we want to block it? Can we survive taking eight and going to eight? I'm not sure. I think we've got to try so we won't be blocking. Another glimmer, not exactly what we're looking for. We could just be dead here. Let's go ahead and pass back. We're gonna have to consider countering something or killing something with murder. We can't block. We're not going to murder it yet. All right, we could just die while we cast this Glimmer of Genius, but we've got to take the risk. Well, they're disintegrating our thing. At least they don't have an artifact out to deal three to us. Um, yes, we want one of these. All right. A second thing in the ice is pretty good. We'll go ahead and play this thing. And then we'll play an island and path. Very touch and go at present. I think we're going to have to murder one of these this turn if they don't cast something pre-combat that needs dealing with, and they did. So let's counter that. And a Lathanu Hellion. So the Alchemist was bait. However, it was bad for us. Not quite as bad as the Hellion, but pretty bad. And we have to block the Hellion here. Don't really have a choice. A Grasp of Darkness would be a good pickup. Not to be. Well, let's pass back. We're for sure going to two here. We're going to have to murder this Hellion and hopefully be able to counter whatever else they may have. All right, murder. And now I'm in the market for an Essence Extraction or a Blue Gear Hulk to flash back an Essence Extraction. That is not what we got. We have to Glimmer here and dig for removal to have any shot. Languish is not going to do it. We can't cast that, so we're going to bottom both of these. And Murder at least gives us a shot. If they have any burn whatsoever, we're dead. Any haste creature, we're dead. Alright. Nothing presents itself thus far. Well, let's murder one of these. Burn spell. Sacking, perhaps drawing one. And it appears they don't, unless it's sorcery speed, such as Exquisite Firecraft or Alms of the Vein. Yep, that will do it. Well, we got run over in that game. Let's hope the rest of the episode doesn't go the same way. Okay. 
Well, unfortunately, we have no black to go in this. We're overloaded with three drops. Let's mulligan. This is a bit more what we're looking for. Keep. Try not to get absolutely run over this time. Our opponent leading off on a sunken hollow there. We're going to play our submerged boneyard. Unfortunately, unless we top deck a swamp, our first two land drops are going to come into play tapped, which is a necessity for Grasp to come online. Prairie Stream, so we're seeing Esper Colors here. Alright, Drowned Catacomb. we will play our own Drowned Catacomb. Don't want to try to jam Lily here. They seem to be a controlling deck as we are, so that would be unfortunate to get her counterspelled. Prairie Stream from the opponent. All right, well, we'll play our Swamp and pass back. Right. Sunken Hollow. Well, both of us making our land drops. Don't want to expose ourselves. In these control matchups, a lot of times the one who blinks first is the one who loses. Telling time, okay. Well, we will pass back. All right. Let's telling time. Oops. Cancel. Doggone lag. Now they know we have an insidious will. Uh, we will take the confirmed suspicions and the island. And play our land and continue to pass. Unfortunately, we flashed them that insidious wheel there. Broken concentration. Let's continue. They are not having to discard, continuing to make land drops. We may be forced to try to do something here. So we have enough to Lily and then counter once. So it might be better to Disciple as it's the least impactful thing at the moment, so we will try. Broken Concentration. All right, we're gonna let that happen and then just pass. Would be nice if they stopped hitting their land drops. All right, they have ten land to our nine. So now we can counter twice. So 
let's go ahead and try to resolve Lily. Of course, since they're Esper, they could have anguished unmaking in the deck. All right, let's try to broken concentration there, scatter. That worked. And Lily resolves. So let's plus her. All right. They probably have another counter because they know we have this insidious will. Or they don't. Also might have been more correct there to tick Lily down just in case she does die to get back our Disciple of the Ring. Jace from the opponent. Hopefully Lily will not be biting the dust. And it appears she won't. Good deal. Well. The question is, do we keep ticking up or do we get our Disciple back? Well, let's first see if we can grasp Jace. And as such, I think we'll keep ticking her up. And we could play Tamio's Journal, but that would leave us one mana short of confirming suspicions, so we're just going to pass. Another Anguished Unmaking. All right, let's see if this can resolve. And it does, and they leave. We are going to continue. And we're going to be cracking some clues. All right, Glimmer, that's good. Uh, just as an aside, in Control Mirrors, you generally want to let card draw resolve, except in certain situations where it's going to just bury you, and then only use your counters on actual spells that impact the game itself. And we're going to try to resolve Tamio's Journal. And that is working, so let's pass back. Planar Outburst. I guess you're awakening it? Um, sure. We'll wait till that gets tapped. So they can't use it for mana. And grasp it. Alrighty. We're going to Glimmer at instep and we want I think we have enough lands we want the confirmed suspicions for sure telling times fine getting a clue there we're not sacking this we want to get to the point that we can just react to something with Tamio's journal sacking clues and getting what we need to deal with the threat at that time and we will pass back and I think we are going to win this one through Liliana's Emblem. They're going to be hard-pressed to deal with her through all these counter spells. All of which we can cast in the same turn. Alright, let's telling time at instep. And we will just get another counter spell. And a land. Okay, we are at tutorability with the journal. We're not going to be greedy here. We're just going to go ahead and emblem Liliana and pass back. This should be over fairly quickly at this point. All right, shambling vent. All right, 
passing back to us. Generate us a clue. Go ahead and make our land drop and crash. All right, dealing four. And we'll just pass the turn. Get four more zombies. Lily's emblem gives you more zombies equal to the number you have, plus two. Languish. Um, no thank you. Alright, we're going to go ahead and do this end phase. Since we may want to search again on our turn. And we will get... Wanting Essence Extraction. Then if they have a Gear Hulk or something at instant speed to flash in, we can also search for a Murder. Uh, sure, you can grasp all my zombies one at a time that you want. And pass. Alright, again, we are going to tutor. And get another three mana counter. And crash. And now we don't care if they try to block with Shambling Vent. It's more than enough damage to overcome the life gain. And I will see you guys in the next one. Herm. Yeah, this doesn't seem keepable. That's a bit better. We are unfortunately on the draw. Okay, so all our lands forever are going to come into play tapped, it seems, which is also unfortunate. Looks like our opponent is playing quite a few cards above 60. 70, it looks like. Which is fine if that's what you want to do. It just adds a lot more randomness to your deck and less consistency. Play our Submerged Boneyard. Perhaps we'll run off a couple of basics in this Sunken Hollow can come into play untapped. I'm not going to count on it, though. Cathartic Reunion, sure. that Ravaging Blaze they discarded? It was. Well, Drowned Catacomb can come into play untapped next turn, then we'll go ahead and play our Thing in the Ice. Sunken Hollow has land types, so that will allow this to come into play untapped. Thing in the Ice is dying, however. That's unfortunate, but quite okay, I think. No permanents besides land for the opponent yet. Well, we will play our Catacomb and pass. We will attempt to Glimmer should we not need to cast anything else on our opponent's turn. Catalog, that's fine. Wonder if they're playing a Sphinx's Tutelage deck here. Discarding a mountain. 
Uh, yeah, it seems so. Well, we are going to counter the Fevered Visions, because that's just not very good for us. We prefer to do card drawing under our own power, thank you. No charity here. Right. Okay, let's try to resolve a glimmer. Sure. Mill some stuff. We will pass back. I think our opponent was upset that they were not allowed to help us draw cards, so we were not allowed to draw our own cards either. Well, we're not going to let them do that either. <laughs> Fevered Visions is very bad for a control deck. Hard to empty your hand when you need targets for everything and the cost is relatively high. Okay. Let's draw some cards. There we go. Liliana. Hmm. Yes, seems pretty good. And we will plus. We could try to color screw them, but at this point I definitely want to hold counter magic up. And now it's kind of a moot point. Collective Defiance. That can deal three to Lily and make us windmill our hand. We'll see what they're choosing to do. I keep saying windmill. What I mean is Wheel of Fortune. They make us... Yeah, that's exactly what they're doing. We do not want this to happen. So, no. Submerged Boneyard. So we could take the time here to recur Thing in the Ice and replay it. Actually doesn't seem to be such a bad idea, so let's do that. There we go. And pass. Rolling Thunder. Do we... If they target Lily, we will counter it. If it's just the thing, we probably won't. If they only have enough to either kill the thing or to deal damage to Liliana. How is this split up? No real way to see. I imagine it's two and two. Either way. Um, no. Okay. Well, we are going to main phase Glimmer. And uh, we want the Gear Hulk for sure. All right, that's fine. Would love to have another counter spell, though it wasn't in the cards. All right. 
Looks like we are okay for the moment. Nothing from the opponent here. We get to keep making our land drops. Let's keep taking Lily up too. And I'm not going to play Jace. I'm going to hold Torrential Gear Hulk. Ready to hit the battlefield. Sure, telling time's fine. Brutal Expulsion. Yeah, let's say no. Going to flashback confirm suspicions. Yes. Yes. Go home, Brutal Expulsion. Nobody wants you here. Right, looks like they're passing back to us. Let's crack a clue. Second confirm suspicions. Don't mind if I do. Gonna tick up. And crash for five. So at this point we can play Jace and still have mana for confirmed suspicions, so we will be doing that, I think. We'll tick him up as well. Uh, bottom. Okay, well, we'll hold that for the moment. We may Essence Extract on one of our own creatures to flip Thing in the Ice here. Or we can just Confirm Suspicions and flip it. Bounce our Gear Hulk back. Alrighty, swinging for seven. And we'll take up both of these planeswalkers. Um, sure, I'll take that. Finish. And we will play the journal. Or will we? No, we won't. Because we're one short of being able to... No, we can play them both. Yeah, we can play them both. We still have six mana for the Gear Hulk. Or we could just tutor with it for a counterspell if we needed to. Displacement Wave. Um, no. And that should be the game. Head and confirm suspicions. Yet again. And that is a lot of clues. Not going to bother doing stuff here when all we really need to do is attack. Alright, on to the next game. Okay, I think we can keep this. Telling time hopefully will help us find what we need. We are up against humans it looks like, or mono white, or white X, aggro of some description. And, excuse me, <clears throat> sorry, I don't know if it's coming through on the recording, but for some reason my voice seems to be giving out, so this may be the last game we play, just depending on how, how it feels towards the end. I mean, I'm feeling fine otherwise, for some reason, 
seems to be failing me. Right, Knight of the White Orchid. At least they don't get the Find a Plains trigger. Right, we really need to hit our fourth land for a Languish. We may actually need to Essence Extraction before we get to turn four. Again, we would be much better off in this game versus aggro were we on the play instead of the draw. It makes a big difference. Going to 14. Right, Consul's Lieutenant. Well, we are going to Telling Time. This is not good. Uh, we'll take the Essence Extraction and the Telling Time. And as much as I would like to just take six here and then languish next turn, we can't guarantee that. And I don't know that I would do that in any event. So I think we're on the Essence Extract, the Consul's Lieutenant plan here. See if they have anything else going on that's more threatening. Thalia's, Thalia's Lieutenant. Well, I think it's still the same plan, so let's do this. Right, and hand we're militia captain. So if we don't draw an untapped mana, then we're going to have to extract the militia captain as well. If we don't draw an untapped mana, we may just be dead. And we didn't, so we have to do this. Not bothering to go to their turn in case they have any indestructible combat tricks or instant speed spells that they could use in response because that would definitely flip and we'd have to kill it in response to the flip. Alright, so it'd be really great, really great if we could draw an untapped mana here. Going to five. That is not what we needed. And I don't think we can survive. We can grasp here and we're still taking eight. So, sometimes you don't hit your land drops and you die. All right, I'm going to try to squeeze in one more if my voice will allow. I'll see you there. Okay, we will keep this. In regards to that last game there, uh, one thing that the mono white lists are very, very good at, probably the best at, is punishing an opponent that stumbles, which is what we did and why we died. Right, blue and red from our opponent here. Very glad to draw a second blue source. Therefore, we're going to put out our second black in case we need to grasp something. All right, still nothing from the opponent. We could just jam Liliana here. However, I think that's kind of reckless, so we're just going to hold up uh, Scatter to the Winds. Don't need to deploy a game finisher early in a control deck like this. Need to just get to the point where it's safe to do so.
All right. Happy to keep drawing lands here. Again, in these control mirrors, which I'm just guessing that this is control, generally the first person to blink is at a disadvantage. Unsubstantiate. Yep. That will do it. Just ticked up for mana there. So we could go with Disciple of the Ring or we could go with Liliana. I think Liliana is probably our best bet. Picking up for mana. Casting Jace. Well, let's try to scatter Jace. And a broken concentration. We may get out planeswalkered here. And imprisoned in the moon would be great. Hmm. I think I'm going to glimmer and try to draw one. Okay, neither of these will bottom those. There is an imprisoned in the moon, and I think Chandra is the one we need to deal with the most. Pick up Lily. Need to emblem her if we can. We're in pretty bad shape otherwise. Also very close to ultimating their Jace there. And they're going to bounce our Lily. Okay. No bounce there. Ah, oh, they're imprisoned in the moon. Okay. Are you going to deal two to Lily? No, you're just ticking up for mana and Glimmer. Wonder if this deck's running Dynavolt Tower. It seems like that's a card that it would want. Well, let's put it back out there or try to. Okay. Broken Concentration. Well, that is unfortunate. I think we are going to get slaughtered by a Chandra emblem. And there's the emblem. And there's Jace ticking up. Okay, 5-2 Lily. Fever Visions isn't good for us either. And dead Lily, and there is the Dynavolt. Yeah, we are most assuredly dead here. We'll still play it out. There is Jace's emblem, so now the first spell we play every turn is going to get countered. Bouncing our thing. And targeting it twice. Dealing a bunch of damage with Lily's emblem. And another Just the Wind. We may just be dying here. Uh, 15 and then 3. Yep, we are dead. Well, that was pretty cool. 
I like that a lot. But I think that that will do it for this episode of Friday Night Magic, friends. We've had some success. We've had some failure. But we've also had some fun. And despite my voice failing, I think it's been a good day. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like below. It really does help tremendously. Consider subscribing to the channel if you'd like to see more videos from me in the future. I have been Teveron, and until next time, friends, be excellent to each other.